Hey guys, welcome back to episode number 12 of Adapting to Change podcast. I'm your host, Alex McMahon. I'm here once again with, of course, Nick and Alan, and I'm very pleased to be able to introduce our guest, Peter Alsop, uh, who's joined us today from the very popular YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, and every other social media platform that there is. Yeah, don't forget uh, YouTube. And YouTube, uh, <laughs> PJ Audits. Um, so welcome, welcome to the studio, Pete. Thanks for coming uh, and, and spending some time to chat with us. I know we spoke off camera and you mentioned about sharing this final video with, with your audience as well. So just for your audience, for your benefit, uh, we're a security man guarding uh, company and cleaning company. So we're kind of at the other end of a lot of the people that you go out and see. Um, so we, we just wanted to kind of get together, have a chat and just kind of see what it's all about, really. Um, so, I mean, just before we get into all, all that sort of good stuff, for our audience, why don't you just give us a bit of context about, about yourself, Pete? I know we spoke again off camera about what you did before you got into this line of work, um, but just for our audience, just tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, basically, as a young lad, I joined the army, to be honest, 15 years old. Um, served with the army for a long time, traveled the world, seen sights, um, finished with the army. I worked down the coal mine for a very short while, Obviously, <laughs> that didn't last long, did it? Uh, and I went to university. I uh, did an engineering degree, so I've been an engineer more or less all my life. We do an engineering in the army as well, he said. Yeah, I was a Royal Engineer originally, and then as soon as I was 18, I went airborne, I used to jump out of aeroplanes. Sometimes he used to give me a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Uh, once I finished, well, while I was at university, I started a, uh, a company up that supplied drivers, you know, an agency. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing that, I thought, well, I'm sending drivers out. And they're running around in a, a big Arctic, um, you know, with a 44-foot trailer on the back with two pallets on. And I thought, hmm, why don't I get myself a little... Because it was mostly fridge work that we did. Mm -hmm. Why don't I get myself a little fridge van get back in touch with these companies, say, look, don't send a great big Arctic all the way up to Scotland. I've got a, a van that'll carry three pallets. Send me up, it'll be a lot cheaper. Hmm. Uh, and I started doing that. And then progressed from there into larger and larger vehicles. Uh, I was having problems getting drivers and stuff, you know, and it was long hours and it was hassle, hassle, hassle. Um, so I started teaching people to drive the trucks to get more drivers, mm -hmm. and that turned out to be more profitable than, <laughs> than actually right. running the trucks. Yeah. So um, I kind of got rid of the haulage business and um, just carried on teaching people to drive. Then I got uh, the opportunity to do a some contract work for uh, a, a company in Sheffield, and... Um, they said, do you want to start teaching people to drive the fork trucks and things? Mm. So I did the fork truck instructor's course. Um, and the thing about that is, if you get a, a fork truck licence, you know, and you end up as a, an instructor, you've only got to get qualified on other vehicles to be able to teach them. So if you can teach a, a counterbalance fork truck, uh, and then you go along and you do a, a reach fork truck, then you, uh, you don't have to do another course. You're mm. entitled to teach that as well. And the same thing applies to things like cherry pickers and scissor lifts and, and stuff like that. Now, the licences that you need to go on building sites to operate them are totally different to mm. operating them in, you know, factories and mm -hmm. things like that. And then I got the opportunity to uh, start teaching heavy plant, you know, the earth-moving equipment, the 360s and... Mm. Uh, and graders and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> so um, I did that and eventually started doing it all for myself. I mean, I had my own uh, driving school anyway, you know, with the trucks. So I started incorporating some of this other stuff that uh, I had the opportunity to learn while I was sub subcontracting for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That carried on and carried on for quite a while and then uh, I made the mistake of thinking oh I'm going to do NVQs and modern apprenticeships 
got a contract with Hull College and it was the worst thing I ever did. All right. Um, the paperwork was horrendous. It's the only qualification where the instructors do more work <coughs> than the trainees. And um, it took me away from what I love doing. I loved mixing with people, meeting people, teaching people, interacting and all that <coughs> kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought, you know, I'm going on a bit now. It's time to get rid. So I passed it on to somebody else for some money mm -hmm. and um, retired. Retired. So was this... Was that like the last job that you did before you moved into what you do, what you do now? <laughs> no, no. I got bored. <laughs> I'm not one to sit on my backside all day and do nothing. Um, I started getting a bit pub fit, you know, um, because I've never really been a drinker. Uh, and I started going to the Forces Breakfast Clubs and they all liked a, a beer or two there. Mm. And so... Uh, you know, I started spending a bit more time in the pub and I thought, I don't want to do this. But one of my friends ran a taxi company and said, why don't you get a taxi licence and come and do a bit of driving for me? So I did. And um, I enjoyed it. So I went and bought a taxi <laughs> and set myself up in the taxi business. And then COVID came. Right. And one Saturday I got on the taxi rank at, 9am and finished at half past four and I'd taken £12.50 and I th said, that's it, done. Mm. Wow. So uh, I was back to the, what am I going to do now? And I thought, well, I quite fancy a go at doing some YouTubes. And I'd, I'd watch one or two people, you know, um, AB doing police stations and things. And I thought, I don't really want to do police stations. I'm more interested in industry. So um, I got my camera. Uh, I, I started off with just my phone, and a, I spent about 120 quid on a gimbal for my phone hmm. and started doing it like that. But the audio wasn't fantastic when it was windy and started building my equipment up. Hmm. That's before I had the drone. And, so when, you know. when did you start then? Uh, just over three years ago. Right, OK. So, I mean, you built up quite a following in a really short space of time. I, mean, I was looking at, at your various channels and your platforms, I mean, you've got over 70,000 subscribers on YouTube, you've got, yeah. uh, I've got some of the stats just on my screen, you've got 12, over 12,000 followers on TikTok, 45,000 followers on Facebook, and those were just those three that I looked at. So you're looking yeah. at yeah. six figures in, what, three years? Yeah, I was monetized in four weeks. Four weeks. I, I was going to say, cause on your, you can kind of see the analytics on your YouTube channel. Yeah. You've got over 35 million views on YouTube. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, recognized everywhere. I'll bet. I'll bet you've got a bit of a distinctive look, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the dreadlocks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, was, was that the light bulb moment for you? I mean, what, what, well, what was the light bulb moment? You mentioned you wanted to get in, into YouTube. What kind of pushed you into like doing kind of the want, audit inside of stuff? I wanted something to do. I wanted something that wasn't, I didn't want a job as such. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to go and sit in an office or work in a factory or, and, and more or less uh, from coming out of the army, apart from, you know, a few weeks, um, <laughs> working for the coal board, uh, you know, while everything was closing down, I did work for myself all, you know, mm. the rest of my life. So, so what was the motivation for you to start at that, that point in time? So what was it a genuine interest in, like you say, industry or, or was, was there an opportunity you saw, you know, people were making money through YouTube, um, social media, etc. I didn't really do it for the money. No, but so it was the love, it was, it was, getting information about things you didn't know about, effectively? Uh, several things, really. First of all, I wanted something to do. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got a low board, very low board. <laughs> you know, um, I can't sit and watch telly and, and things like that. I've, yeah. You know, uh, Mrs PJ always says to me, will you bloody sit down? <laughs> you know, mm. come and sit down and sit it. Well, come and watch this with me on TV. And, uh, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's the odd thing I like to watch mm. on TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when a film comes on and it says, you know, things like, 
contains violence and sex. Right, well, what is this for? <laughs> you know. But other than that, you know, like the East Enders and the Coronation Street and that, just absolutely nothing for me. It, it, it boring. Yeah. So, so what we say, like I like to say, what was that light bulb moment? They thought, I want to get into this. I want to start doing some videos about. I, I, I wanted something to do. I've always been in, into, interested in photography. Yeah. Uh, I've never really done anything in the video making line. Mm. Uh, so it gave me the opportunity to learn something new. Um, I'd never done any video editing or anything, so once again, it was a new skill I had to learn. Mm. Uh, and I'm, all, I'm always learning something. I'm learning Egyptian Arabic at the minute, okay. um, which is not not the easiest thing to learn. Mm -hmm. My Spanish is not too bad, but my Egyptian <coughs> Arabic is very poor. But I've not been doing it long. So I needed something to do. Um, I needed something where I could interact with people. Um, you know, I've always uh, I've always enjoyed meeting people, and there's some. I mean, I know there's some idiots out there, but there's some <laughs> wonderful people out there. Mm. There really is. People that, for no reason at all, will give you the time to stand and talk to you yeah, yeah. and tell you what's happening. You know, even when they're, when they're very busy themselves, they will take time out of the busy schedule to explain things to you mm. uh, and tell you what they <coughs> do and and how they do it. And to me, that's, that's interesting. Mm. That's really, really interesting. And they're the people I love to meet, mm. you know. So what are your main scope of work in terms of what you're doing now, Pete? Is it like security gatehouses? Is it manufacturing industry? Is it a combination of all? Any kind of industry, to be honest. Um, if I'm going out videoing, I'll, <laughs> I'll go on my computer, I'll look on Google Maps and I'll I'll not put the map section on, I'll put the uh, the aerial view on. And I'll look for industrial estates, so they stand out. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a look what factories are there, and I think, oh look, food manufacturing place there, there's an engineering place there, and this and that and the other. That looks somewhere interesting. It's got a wide variety of different industries. Some are small, some are large. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a varied and interesting place to go. <laughs> People say to me, don't you, f oh, it's boring, it's an industrial estate, but for me, they're not. Hmm. I mean, what is it that, you, that you're auditing as such? What are you going to look for? Or is it just to kind of go and see what's there? I think I need the channel auditing because that's what some other people were mm. doing, you know, it's following what I mean, other people were doing, but... Um, it's basically exploring, isn't it? You're, what, sorry? you're exploring, you're exploring those yeah, menus. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are times when we go, when we see dangerous practices. I mean, myself and my good friend DJ was at a place and this guy was driving around in a fork truck with a stack that was right up in the air. He's driving forward, he's driving like a lunatic. Couldn't see where he was going, he could kill somebody. I, I send the video, yeah. 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 Um, and things like that we like to try and highlight. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, when I go out, it's it's because I want to know what's going off. Mm. I'm a nosy. Mm. So person. I mean just just on that, it's probably a bit of a probably a difficult question. The ramifications for that individual, you reporting it not reporting it, but putting it out there in the in the public domain about him having practices. Now you could you could argue there's a safety awareness piece there, yeah. but, but potentially that, that person could end up in in trouble, basically. Well, we, we spoke, we got his manager out, actually, and spoke to his manager. The idiot was still doing it while his manager was there talking to us. Mm. You know, and the manager says, we're going to have to have a word with him. I says, anybody who's been taught to drive a, a fork truck and has got a fork truck licence should know better than that. Yeah. yeah. And the manager says, I, I totally agree, and don't worry, we will, we will have a word with him. Mm -hmm. So, in some ways, um, I mean, it, and I know this incident look, doesn't look very good on the driver, and it doesn't look 
fantastic on the company, but it shows that the company is willing to sometimes listen to what we say mm -hmm. uh, and, and react to it. Mm. I'm sure, though, for every instance that you've had like that where someone's willing to actually come and engage with you and have a civilised conversation, which there's plenty of people who aren't. To be, to be honest, I get more people come and have a civil conversation with me than an than a aggressive conversation. Hmm. Really? What, what would you say the split is? Is it like 60, 70% of people are, are okay and are amicable? And you've got... I, I, I would say 70, 75% of people are... Reasonable. Reasonable, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It, on, on, on that, do they all end up on your YouTube channel or uh, your social media? Or do if you I, think, I'm, 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 I'm just nothing in that content? I've, I've visited that site. I've not got any, any reactions. There's nothing really interesting there. So I'm talking about the, the people interactions. Do, do, do you then put it on YouTube or do you not bother? Uh, if somebody comes and has an interaction with me, unless it's just come along, unless they just come along and say, "What are you doing?" I'm videoing. Okay, see ya. That's not worth putting on. No. If somebody comes along and has an interaction with me that's even like four or five minutes long, I'll put that on. Yeah, even if it's Benign. not boring. Yeah, mund yeah, a bit mundane. Yeah, not, yeah. not clickable. I, I think so. somebody. Well, I, I think everything's clickable because. You know, what's interesting for you is not interesting for me. I mean, everybody's going mad about football at the moment. <coughs> Bloody hate football. No. <laughs> but do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strokes for folks. Yeah, true. And um, I guess it's the altercations that get the most hits, though, that, that the most views, well, the that, most that likes. that was going to be one of the things I come on to, because there are um, channels out there who do this kind of thing and you can tell from the get-go they are there just purely to antagonise a reaction so they yeah. get a clickable a bit of clickbait a video that's yeah. maybe yeah, yeah. going to go yeah, I, I totally agree and sometimes I get tired with the same brush yeah. uh, but generally speaking um, when people come out to talk to me unless they're shouting and roping at me when, they, when they're approaching me I always have the attitude that I'm going to be respectful and I'm going to speak to them properly. And when people come up to me, I say, hey up, mate, uh, hey up, Doc, how are you doing? Mm. You know? Like I said, I've, I've, I've watched a lot of your videos and th that theme does come across. It yeah. always starts at your end with a level of respect. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't bait people right from the start. Mm. But don't get me wrong, you know, if somebody... If someone if somebody, opens the door slightly. Somebody opens the door... Hmm. Then I'll react, and and then it depends how wide they open the door. Hmm. If they if they're just a little bit stroppy, then I'll just be a little bit stroppy back. But if hmm. they get really, do you think some people almost because I mean this is like a well-known practice now, probably across the country, people see these type of videos all hmm. the time. Do you think people almost like you said you get tired of the brush? People expect you to be like that. You're here to film. A reaction video you're here to oh i get constantly off. accused of it i mean if you read some of the uh <laughs> some of the comments i get on <laughs> youtube and facebook uh you know get a job and get your hair cut and such, 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 such a body wake um <laughs> yeah oh look at you you, you know you're a bloody scruff or you're a pretend black man with your dreadlocks some of the stuff they come out with, oh, I hope you get cancer and die. Some of the stuff That's they come extreme, out with, yeah. some yeah. of the stuff they come out with is, is hateful. Mm. And I just think, but, I think to myself, that shows more about you than it does about me. Yeah. Yeah. That shows yeah, more absolutely. about the type of person that you are than the type of person I am. Mm. You know, apparently, um, if you read some of the comments, people that go out and <coughs> video factories and things like that, are Pedophiles. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it's, that, just, it's just a bizarre that, comment, isn't it? But that's the type of comment that yeah. some people come on, and I but, think to myself, you need to have a look in a dictionary to but, see what a pedophile yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, 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 it's the same with the people who, who put comments. Usually, have got some sort of strong opinion either way. But you know, the, 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 the what what gets me watching the videos is is the sort of knowledge level of those individuals that you, you, you're talking to and I think I think some of them are incredibly naive you know yeah. in, in what you can and can't do as a member of the public you know so yeah. and I think you know whether you're flying a drone or, or um, it, it, you know filming the site they don't have that knowledge and no. I think mm. uh, what are the restrictions on drone flying? 
So I'm sure you'll, you'll know, obviously. Cause you, Basically, you the type of drone that I fly and most of the auditors fly, I know what I know, same with DJ, uh, we fly a, a sub-250 gram drone. I've got a Mini 3, he's got a Mini 4. Uh, and the restrictions, literally, if you go on the CAA website, uh, you can fly anywhere apart from over prisons, um, over, you know, around airfields, and one or two very sensitive areas, you know, MOD places Military, and things yeah. like that. But other than that, if you go on the CAA website, it says you can fly over built-up areas, <coughs> recreational parks, industrial areas, shopping centres, town centres, the whole kit and caboodle. The only thing you can't fly over is crowds of people. Now, like the a, general... Like a designated crowd. Or just yeah, like, like, like an event or something like that. I think the classic uh, uh, a crowd is not like five or six people, but something yeah. in the region of 100 people, mm. all crowded in together. Mm. So I think, I mean, for, for me, I, I think a lot of, like you said, you're quite right, I said all naivety of people is there's almost an air of, well, you can't do <coughs> it because you don't have my permission. This exactly. is my GDPR, all mm. that sort yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that exactly. sort of. That sort of nonsense. I mean, is that the main kind of comment that you tend to get back from people when you've obviously you've got your? You don't camera. have, yeah. You don't have my permission to film me. You're not allowed to use my image. You're breaking GDPR. You know, um, and they don't understand that there's no such thing as privacy in a public place. So if I'm on a, in a public place in a public street, if I want to walk around, say a market and photograph or film stall holders people going about shopping etc etc and quite within my right to do it anyone is anyone is yeah yeah, yeah absolutely mm. anybody so like in terms of I, I know you mentioned that public place so if you're flying your drone over i don't know just a factory for example and yeah. that's within their their building boundary doesn't matter doesn't matter no the that's... caa control the airspace so they, they 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 own or rent or lease the the property, the building, the land, etc., etc. And as long as that drone doesn't uh, interfere with any work that they're doing, mm. um, I'm quite legal to fly over. Now, I wouldn't fly a drone around the site at 10 foot high, um, but I, I'd certainly keep it above uh, roof, rooftop level. Mm. So you get the aerial shot? To get the aerial shots, yeah. I think some people believe they have not just the space on the ground, but all the way up yeah, effectively yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The other thing that uh, the other thing that people believe <coughs> is that uh, you're not allowed within 50 metres. Now, certain drones aren't. Does that, again, depend on the weight class? It depends on the weight class, yeah, okay. yeah. And you have to keep line of sight as well? You have to keep line of sight, yeah. I always find it surprising how a lot of the police that turn up they they don't understand yeah. the legislation as well and and the regulations and they're confused with it you'll be amazed how many police people policemen men and women have said to me i've watched a lot of your videos and i've learned a lot yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i've learned things that i don't i didn't know especially about drones and photography and public well, i i had no that. idea about the regulations with drones before watching these audits yeah and, and then, the police don't a lot of police don't. Yeah. And then you watch, you watch them and one of the auditors says, this is regulation. And it's like, no, it's not. It can't be. And then you, you research. It's like, oh, he's right. Yeah, actually. yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, and, and I often say to people, look, I, I do this for a living. <coughs> I do know what I'm talking about. I've got X hundreds of videos on YouTube and Facebook and everything. If I don't know what I'm talking about now, it's about time I give up. <laughs> One thing that always surprises me as a, as a security professional is how many people don't display the licenses. Mm. It seems to be that every other video, yeah. you're saying, uh, you or DJ, but... where's your SIA? Are you security? Yeah, where's your SIA license? Yeah. Well, it's in my bag. It's in, yeah, it's in my bag. Yeah, it's in the office. Yeah. It's, it's in my pocket, you know. And I, 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 I've started saying to him now, no, you can't be security. <coughs> yeah, I am. No, no, you can't, mate. You're not wearing a badge. <laughs> it's in office. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not security then. You're hmm. not wearing a badge. You're not security. I, I, I know you're there to an audit. It is auditable. Yeah. So we we are checked on our employees yeah. having the 
the license on display. Yeah, and you said to them, look, it's law that you display this. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Mm. That's 101, isn't it? Yep. Security yeah. training. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, in like terms of socials, um, like the likes of YouTube, Instagram, etc. if you were to have like a league table of people who do your like, line of work, like yourself, like DJ audits, etc., where would you kind of rank in terms of like a following? Are you like quite near to the top or are you like, um, I don't know, you've also got several hundred thousand followers across various uh, yeah. platforms. Yeah, um, I would say <coughs> AB's the king, auditing Britain's the king. But he doesn't necessarily do industry. He does police stations more than anything. Right, okay. Uh, when we, it comes we spoke on the phone, you said that that's something you absolutely yeah, don't. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. I, I think I've done one police station out of all my... And what's your thoughts on that? Why, why, why do you avoid them? I don't like them. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'll be honest. Um, I think they're boring. Yeah. Right. So, I, you know, so some 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 of these auditors they actually sort of, sort of make a, a, an issue out of sort of placing themselves at the back gate and flying the drones yeah, and, yeah. And, and and it's it's almost wasting police time, isn't it? That is to me that's deliberately going out of your way to and that, people. That's yeah. that's and where my issue people. is, you know. I think. Yeah. And what about um, you know? Have you ever been accused of uh, under sort of? terrorist anti-terrorism oh, legislation constantly. i mean a lot of them do and i say that <laughs> and i think you know what's your what's your thoughts around that you know i mean we we, we, we in the security industry we're, we're massive on anti-terrorism and training yeah. act awareness scan etc so so you know hostile reconnaissance i can never say that word <laughs> uh, and 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 effectively we've got people you know we, you know within the auditing community that that put themselves in that position where they could be seen to be sort of doing some... Um... Hostile reconnaissance. Yes, I, 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 I don't want to say it again, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um, if that's what I was doing, I wouldn't mis make myself as conspicuous. No, and I get that, I get that. I, I wouldn't walk around with hair like I've got, in shorts, <laughs> mm. with a, a body cam on and, you know... I mean, it doesn't fit the profile of someone doing hostage. That's, 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 that's the thing, isn't it? But, yeah. you know, it, we're stereotyping that, in that yeah. respect as well. So. But there again, people say, how do I know that you're not, you know, like uh, hidden in plain sight kind of thing? Mm. But uh, as, as far as that goes... I mean, things were worse in the seventies than the oh, no, they were blowing pubs. Yeah, up. no, absolutely. But, and, and I take your point on that because I, I, I did hear you talk about that in, on one of your, your videos. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. Yeah, yeah, things were a, a lot worse in the seventies than they are now. But there again, I think the security forces, MI5, and whoever they are, are a lot more on the ball than they were then. Yeah. And they were homegrown terrorists then. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, which are a lot harder to detect than mm. than uh, the modern day terrorists, mm. and and they use a different method now, rather than blowing stuff up, they will just walk along, <laughs> uh, and drive up a curb and run people over mm. or run around with a knife and stab as many people as they mm. can, mm. till the police come and mm. stop yeah, them yeah. one way or another. So, so who's, who's number one then? Auditing Britain. Auditing Britain, yeah. yeah. He, I'm sure I've seen his videos. Yeah, 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 sort of I think he's mind. got something in the region of getting on for a quarter of a million subscribers yeah. now. The second place has got to be my, my good friend DJ. He so is. I've seen loads of DJ's mm. videos. Yeah. I've, I've never seen his face. Does he never show his face? No. Because you, you always, you, you sort of uh, berate care. over yours to show your face on the video. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'm that good looking that... <laughs> I think everybody has got a right to see my face. Exactly. You know. exactly. Public service. <laughs> add, uh, add to the views. <laughs> and I'm modest as well. No, I've been noticed. No, um, TJ's got a young family. Yeah. So he likes to... Protect his identity. Protect his identity to protect his kids, which yeah. I totally understand, you know. Uh, maybe when kids get a bit older, then it might be a different story. But, yeah. You know. I mean, what's your thoughts, Pete, on... Like, I, I'll call them rogue, <coughs> rogue operators within your industry who are kind of going out there to, to deliberately, like, stoke up situations and get people kind of in, into trouble or to lose their jobs. So what, what's your view on that? Because it's almost like giving people like yourself, like, you know, you've set out quite clearly so far in the chat why you do what you do, and it's, 
it, it's definitely not for those reasons. What, what, what are your thoughts on people like that? Because there are obviously operators out there who are doing that kind of thing. A um, couple of things. First of all, you see them start and putting videos on, but they don't last long. Hmm. People think that uh, do what myself and DJ do is easy. And I'll be honest, um, I work generally seven days a week, you know, uh, and there's a, it's, it's not hard physical work, but it's, it's long hours. You know, you go out in early in the morning, you get in late at night, you do that two, sometimes three days a week. And then, as you know, with doing these podcasts, there's, there's a lot of a lot of hours editing and mm. uploading and everything else. And these people think it's um, an easy way to make a quick buck. Mm. And don't get me wrong, uh, you can earn good money doing you know, what we do, YouTube and things, mm. you can earn good money. But uh, they think it's it, they think it's an easy throw. Uh, and secondly, I think that uh, I mean I've been attacked a few times. I think once they've had a couple of smacks in mouth, really? <laughs> they decide it's not for them. So, so actually, struck. I've seen a few videos where people have been pushed, mm. which I know falls under assault. But have you actually been physically punched as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, good deal. Yeah. I had one where a security guard attacked me, uh, and I put that on YouTube. But the uh, the company got it took down. Uh, I had one at for, a, for, for for what reason? That's not acceptable in in in, in any industry, industry, let alone no, security. No. You know, I think uh, they got it took down because of trademark, because you could see the. It was a, a, a building site. Right. It, it'll be reputational damage. Probably, probably yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the individual was, was dealt with accordingly. Yeah, you would have yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, I had one threatened to give me a good idea and he got sacked the next day. Um, a security officer? Yeah. That was um, at Doncaster where they were building the new uh, Amazon site. Hmm. Um, just come up, demanded I turn my camera off go away mm. you know again kind of comes back to that education piece doesn't it I, I was, what are the, yeah, I was gonna say that, what yeah. the problems with people at the other end of the lens tends to be because of a naivety or a yeah. lack of awareness and education on what yours or anyone who's doing your line of work what your rights are with a camera in your hand with a drone <laughs> in your hand i think the other thing as well is that um you get these people that'll walk a hundred yards Come and stand in front of a man with a camera and then say, don't video me, don't no. photograph me, I, you've no right to do it. I've, I've, I've said that several times. I love, yeah. your, I love your comments on that. Yeah, well, well, go well, away. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Why would you walk all that distance up to a man with a camera mm. knowing that he's filming yeah. and then demand not to be filmed? Yeah. It's just a joke. And they've got no, half the time, they've got no other argument other than I haven't given you permission to video me. You yeah, know? it's bizarre. Isn't it? I must admit, I, I do feel sorry, it's because I'm from the industry, uh, I do feel sorry for some of the security officers who don't know the regulations because I don't necessarily think it's their fault. It's not something that the, 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 there's no training a standard, if you will. Yeah, that's, that's uh, a good point. So I, I do feel sorry for them sometimes because you, you, you watch the videos and you think, oh, you've made yourself look stupid there. Yeah. So, so we, we do try and do things a bit different. So we, we do, we, we have training courses for our staff. So yeah. just to educate them, one, on what the regulations are, but two, how to deal with, mm -hmm. with people who are audits. So our, our sort of outlook on it is if someone was auditing one of our sites, I would expect our employee to go over, engage with them, and actually answer a few questions. Yeah. Tell them, tell them what, what when they can do. Tell yeah. them what the site is. Perhaps show them part of the site if yeah. they can do. Yeah. Because I think what that do, does it, is it. Perhaps not someone like you or DJ, but the what the ones that do try to antagonise, it'll diffuse it yeah, straight absolutely. away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what we try and do from 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 yeah. depth. <laughs> it, it's getting now. So more and more people know what we do. Yeah. There's there's less. And, and DJ will tell you the same. There's less people come up with an aggressive attitude than they used to. <coughs> I walk around a, an industrial <coughs> estate, and all the, time, 
Sorry, PJ, carry on. <coughs> All the time I'm walking around, I've got people <coughs> driving past in vans shouting, PJ! <laughs> You know, but and, but, and, but there's always a new generation, isn't there? There's always a new generation, isn't it? <coughs> no. And uh, I get security guards coming up and saying, I watch your videos and stuff like that. But, <coughs> yeah, I, I totally agree that um, <coughs> part of the uh, SIA course now ought to... <coughs> excuse me. It ought to include dealing with photographers and <coughs> a certain amount of drone laws, etc., etc. It might be bad, bad for business, though, for you and DJ. You might get a few a few less clicks. But I don't want the aggro. Hmm. I don't, I, I'd, so <coughs> say I'd rather have people come up and tell me about the company. Yeah. I mean, I don't get as many clicks, but I'm not in it for the money. I don't need the money. It, it'd be but interesting. Nice. Sorry? But it's nice. <laughs> it's not bad. So, I, 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 Seriously, I don't do it for the money. I don't. I don't need the money. So, so just I was so talking about the money, the advertising bit. So the way I understand it, I think you actually explained it on one of your videos to. I'm not sure it was a copper or uh, a individual that you sort of have a decent conversation with. That that I'd say, for example, <laughs> you, YouTube, you have like an advert at the start, one in the yeah. middle, one at the end, and you get sort of sixty percent of that revenue for that advert and, yeah. and the. the um, Goes, goes to, to YouTube. YouTube. Is that, that is that still the case? Yeah. I, I didn't even know that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, that's how we get paid, and it's same with Facebook right. and TikTok. So, so sort of, what sort of figures are you talking <coughs> for an advert? I've got to ask the question. Tell, no tell him to yeah, don't, yeah, don't tell him. I. Uh, <sighs> I have an Alan Briley auditing channel. Yeah. If you it's kind of it's pro rata. <laughs> I, lo I love yeah, that. It, it, it varies from video to video. Um, doesn't, doesn't it vary from the amount of views you get? So if it's under like I don't know, just spitballing numbers. Here. I know these are accurate, but if it's under ten thousand, you'll get X amount. If it's under fifty thousand views, you'll get X. Or is it no, on, not like, really, not really, because I've had videos that have had eight thousand views, <coughs> uh, and people bid on it. What happens is uh, people will bid uh, uh, to put their adverts oh, on okay. on the on the uh, video uh, I've had some where I, I, I earn might be two pound or two pound fifty per thousand views and then I've had others where I'm earning 10 11 pound per thousand views hmm. so uh, and it depends on the time of year as well like uh, <coughs> October November December building up to Christmas the revenue goes up. Hmm. Because there's more and more people advertising. January, you might as well stop at home and watch <laughs> tell it. No. no, January is is um, the revenue is not as good in January. Middle of February it starts to pick up again. But I'm not bothered because I'm going to be in. And do, do you choose? <laughs> they come to you and you say, yeah, that, that you can advertise. No, it's all done. Google do everything. Google does. That's what their forty percent is for. Right. So I was going to say, try and get the podcast advertised in between but then judging by some of the views you get we're not paying that much <laughs> cost of all hmm. um, so I mean you, you mentioned before about being assaulted a couple of times has there ever been an occasion where you've been kind of at risk or close to being arrested or in trouble with the police or anything on any of your content I had a police woman insist she, insist she was going to arrest me in Gainesville one day because I refused to give her my details did you, I, I, I have no idea on the law. Was it something that you needed to do or you didn't? Um, the only reason you need to give a police officer your details is if you've been arrested. Oh, right. So officer if you've been detained. So officer was and then you can then. still wait till you get to the police station before you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ's been arrested a couple of times. Right. What, what for? Uh, refusing to give his details. So that's a wrongful arrest then? Obviously. That's right, and then he sued the police. I was just going to say... I, I would have seen a few that. of his videos yeah. where he said, I'm in the process of of suing this police department. Yeah, yeah. Wrongful arrest. So has he actually gone through it and sued oh, yeah. people? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he was filming one place and this, uh, I think he was an inspector or something, grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground and, uh, and kept him locked up for about eight hours and he got... Quite a decent mm. amount. 
So, so here's a question for you, and you, you might not like it. Why not just give the details? Because if, if a police officer came over to me and said, what's your name? I'd tell them my name straight away. Is, is, is there a reason behind not giving it? Is it because you don't have to? Or? Because you don't have to. Yeah. Is, you see, <coughs> the thing about auditing, really, is showing people that you can stand up for your civil rights. Right. You have a right to photograph in public. You have a right to fly your drone. You have a right to withhold your name from the police. Mm. The police have to have a legitimate reason to arrest you but until or detain you, and they can't demand your details unless they detain you. Mm. You know, mm. they've got to, and if they do, they're, they're in trouble. That's, that's what part of auditing is about, is, is people standing up for the civil rights. Right. So, question for Alan and Alex. Have, have you guys ever had any of your sites that you were managing at that time audited? I have, yeah, I've had one, actually. Um, it was... Was uh, it PJ? It was, yeah. Oh, right. it, it actually was. You, you've, oh, done, it? Um, you've done two. Um, so one was legal and general over in Sherburn and Elmer. I, was, um, I think I was with Marty at the time. Big black guy. I'm not sure. I think, it, I think it was just yourself. Um, there's a guy called Steve who, who was a security officer that engaged you. Because um, I think he pointed out, you already knew, but he pointed out that you couldn't fly your drone because there's an airfield not far away from the site. Oh, it's Sherburn and Elmer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think... Um, what company was that? Uh, it was Legal and General Modular Homes. Big, huge... Factory. That's right, yeah. yeah. And I was surprised uh, because I always thought Legal and General was uh, just insurance. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I remember that. He was quite a nice guy, actually. Yeah, I, I, I remember watching it at the time thinking, oh, my God, not... Just come across all right. Me. And he, he actually, he dealt with you. <laughs> If you were going to write a textbook on a security officer, how you kind of approach just anyone in public, yeah. never mind an auditor, just anyone in public, he was calm, he was respectful. He yeah, it was very, it was very good. Distance. I remember, I remember so, the incident. I, yeah. You know, I think he listens and watches to a few of the episodes. So props, Steve, for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a, we had a nice chat. Yeah, and um, one of the other ones, I will, I'll, I'll tell you off camera. Um, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll go into it now because it actually raises a good point. Um, it was, it was a site in Sheffield. This is a few years ago now. This is probably, I'm trying to think, I think this was pre-COVID. So this might have been around about 2019, early 2020. It wouldn't have been me then. Oh, no, sorry. After COVID. Sorry, after COVID. It definitely was you. It definitely was you. I'll be I'll find it. was a good-looking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it was a, um, so the security officer in question phoned me at the time of the audit because um, the person didn't have their SIA license on them, and they said, right. "Video's going to go out there. You're going to see I don't have my license on me. I'm going to get sacked. I'm and really worried, really upset." And then when the video went out, <laughs> there was a bit of a pile on in the comments um, about the person's appearance. So it was a, like a bit of a flippant, jokey comment that you made in the video um, about some gates, which was kind of a bit of an innuendo to this person's appearance. And then the pylon in the comments was pretty brutal. Um, obviously, that's not within your control. I um, think I know which one you mean. Was it out, um, out Mansfield Way? No, no, it wasn't. It was near Brinsworth. Near Brinsworth? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, my, my point would be that that person literally, when they saw the comments coming through, phoned me in tears, like inconsolable, really upset. Mm. Um, I mean... Obviously, people commenting in your video, that's completely <coughs> out of your control, so I'm not blaming you for that. Um, but what, what's your thoughts on kind of that almost after effect of, you know, people piling on and almost to a, to a degree, almost cyberbullying? Um, <laughs> the majority of them, they get absolutely <coughs> hammered in the comments, <coughs> ask for it. Mm. They really do. Uh, and some people get picked on when they don't really deserve it, and I do feel for them sometimes. Mm. Um, but there, there again, you haven't seen my comment. No, 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 absolutely. I'm not saying. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I can. I do feel for them sometimes. Mm. Uh, I really do. Mm. 
And um, no, it's just it's just interesting that you've got you have an awareness <laughs> of that, and you don't just see it and think, ah, oh, well, that's not my problem. That, that's, that's nice to see. I, I, I think really. the question I was going to ask: there, do, do you ever intervene in in in, in those comments and just put your own just calm it down, lads? You know, he's just doing his job, whatever it might be. I, I do at times, yeah, and. When I'm making these videos, I don't deliberately go out of my way mm. to make somebody look stupid no, or not, incompetent. No. Mm. They do um, that for um, themselves. They do that themselves, mm. yeah. The only time I do that is if they're being an absolute <coughs> tool. Yes, get that. Get you that. know, and if yeah. they're being a tool, then and I think to myself, well, you, you're getting everything you, you asked for. You're going to get everything yeah. that you asked for. Have you had any sites that... And it, no, uh, I, I haven't. Um, I mean, we've had all sorts of interactions where... Um, where, where you know, people come and say, we can't just check, you know, but, but not, 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 not recently, anyway. Mm. So. I've, I've had three. So, I don't know who did the audit. I know we had one at Kellogg's, which was... Is it over Hullway? It's quite a few years ago. One, one, of Neil, one of Neil's yeah. sites. Uh, and then we had uh, one in Leeds, uh, and I'll tell you the location after this. It, was it was it me? It wasn't you. It wasn't you. It was. Is is a Leeds lad, Marty. Marty, quite is he quite tall and dangly? Yeah. Yeah, it was Marty who did it. Marty and can be a little abrasive at times. There was, to be honest with you, he was. But then on the on the other side, our employee had behaved completely inappropriate. Mm. So so that was an interesting one. Uh, and then the other one, I, f I thought the guy's name who we I was talking about before, and Charlie Beach is yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. Charlie yeah. did one of one of uh, one of the depth sites in Manchester, mm. but but it, it it was really really sort of well dealt with, so it was mm. really good. Mm. Uh, but, it, but it's interesting. You, I see these videos pop up every so often, and you click on it and you think, please don't be my site, please don't be my site, please don't be my site. <laughs> and then when it comes on, you can sort of relax a tiny bit, yeah. but. I think Charlie. Uh, I think Charlie he doesn't go out of his way to antagonise people necessarily. Mm. Mm. You know, okay, he responds if people are being, you know, a bit aggressive or a bit stupid. But oh, yeah, and he'll, he'll handle himself as well. I've, I've said. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. I, I think he he seems to be okay with people who are okay. Yeah. yeah. But if if people and I, I won't Get swear, cheaper. but if people are a bit like that, he'll give them a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all do, don't mm. we? Yeah. We all do. So I've I've noticed recently, PJ, you've started doing um, like almost reaction videos to other auditors. Yeah. Um, I think I saw in another video that you were um, talking about almost scaling back what you're doing now. Is that what the future holds for you? Do you see you going out there less doing your own videos and maybe kind of like you said doing these these reaction voiceover? Yes and no. To be honest, um, I, I've had. So much on just lately, it's absolutely unreal. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting a new business up. Another <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like I say, I can't sit on my backside and do nothing. So I'm starting a new business up. So I've had all the aggro of setting up a limited company, sorting out bank accounts, sorting out accountants, and, and everything else like that. And what is then, it that you're doing? Can you say on camera? Or? You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, I'd rather leave it as a shock. I mean, it's a pro <laughs> no. It's nothing to do with. It's nothing to do with auditing. It's You're not starting a security company, yeah? You're going to be a competitor. <laughs> <laughs> Give the game away. <laughs> no, I'm going to do. Uh, I'll t I will tell you. I I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to work in property. Right. Do you need any security or cleaning? Because we can do that for you. <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm going to be flipping houses. Well, we can clean them. We can clean them. You, you, you get it ready. We'll come and clean it for you. Then you can, you can sell it on. Right. Okay. <laughs> big, big market. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be buying houses that not necessarily falling down, but need modernising a little bit. You know, yeah. new bathrooms, yeah. tidying up and everything. Hmm. Doing that and then selling them on. Cool. Um, that's the intention at the moment. Hmm. Uh, with that, I mean, I've got, I've got three daughters. Uh, and um, it'll give them well it'll give them a bit of financial security because uh, they've got young kids so they're not working at the moment mm. um, the kids are just at that age where they're starting school now so this time next year <coughs> the kids will be at school full time mm -hmm. so they can have a part time job you know not building but 
support clearing the rubble out yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you know just general labouring and, oh, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and then when eventually um, I do pack in you know when they nail the lid on the box and chuck me in the hole or in the furnace or whatever, wherever I end up um, then hopefully they're, they're going to have a viable business for them to no, a legacy. carry on because obviously they're not going to want to do the uh, the YouTube videos. And it sounds like you're going to be uh, busy then for the next couple of years getting getting that business up and running. I'm and always busy. Always busy. And the other thing as well is that um, sometimes, you know, I still make videos. I go to Egypt a lot. I've got an apartment in Egypt. I go to Egypt a lot. <coughs> And sometimes it's a pain making videos when I'm on holiday. You know, all I want to do is go and crash out by the pool or yeah. go down to the beach or go to the bar and have a, a beer. Uh, I only have two of them. I'm not a drinking man. <laughs> uh, but they do a beautiful steak at this place here, Waves. <laughs> 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 down on the marina in Hegada. That's the place to go. Thank God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I um, when I go on holiday, I want to go on holiday. I don't mind making the odd video, yeah. and the reaction videos, I can do those on holiday. Yeah, anyway. sure. But um, if I've got this, uh, if I've got this property business going, then my kids can look after it while I'm away. Hmm. You know and. Hmm. I tell you what would be interesting get, getting someone like PJ or a DJ who, who could pot potentially come and look at one of our sites and, and sort of we can see whether the training we've put into place with our staff pays off and whether, whether they remember what the regulations are and mm. they remember how to engage inside, with inside people auditing. Yeah. well do you have training days we do you know? yeah, it might be worth me coming up or DJ a D a DJ nice. lives yeah, in yeah. it might be worth um it might be worth me coming up one day and mm -hmm. and having a word with them and just you know perhaps a bit of interaction or role play how to deal with an yeah, auditor. That'd be really show, good. show a few of your you sort of more choice videos. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Some of the well, just, yeah, just yeah. show them one or two of the one one or two of the tricks of the trade. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm. That'd be great. And, and how auditors try to wind up security guards. Yeah. And, you know, like and things like that, and just explain the drone laws to them yeah. for a start. And photography is not a crime. Mm. It might be worthwhile because we're, we're we're putting together a, a new induction video. If uh, PJ is up for it, and obviously we'll reimburse you for your time, get him to uh, get him. He can meet Solvey, record a little piece to say, look, this is this is what I do. This is what you need to do. So yeah. build it in with the induction. Yeah, as long as you pay me in coffee, I'm fine. <laughs> So we've got coffee. a lovely coffee machine in the office. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, Pete, thank you so much for coming up. I know you've travelled to Leeds from Workshop. Thank you so much for giving you, as your time. It's been a really insightful, really interesting chat and everything I wanted it to be. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, we'll drop a link in our YouTube channel um, where you can find all, all Pete's socials and all his channels. Um, and we'll share that, obviously, on our on our LinkedIn as well. And, and I'm sure Pete, your audience will be able to catch this video on, on yours as well. We'll share the, yeah, the edit with you so you can, you can put it out to your I'll, audience. I'll well. share your link on mine as well. Brilliant. All right, well, until next time, thanks everyone and we'll see you soon. Thank you. I'll see you there.